How's it going, everyone? My name is Alex. I'm an electronic music producer and DJ. I make music under the artist name Stiletto FM and Mr. Blue. And today I just wanted to go over three tips for adding groove to your beats in Ableton. Yeah. So the first thing I wanted to show, the groove pool is something that is usually overlooked. And especially with the new Ableton Live 12, you know, all the changes that are made throughout the years, it's something that can continue to get overlooked as there's all these other new features. But the groove pool is really, really tight. I don't know any other way to put it, but using the groove pool is your friend when it comes to tightening the overall rhythm of your track. Right now, I have this swing MPC uh, groove already attached to all of the tracks on here. So uh, as I continue to work on this track and all that stuff, I could swap these out. I could have multiple uh, grooves for different tracks. But for the sake of an example, we see that I, I've placed this on all of these tracks right now. And with this global amount, I can adjust how much of that groove is happening. So it's not just um, a binary on or off. It's uh, you could put the amount of the groove of our uh, loop without the groove and then with the groove. All right, now I'm gonna adjust it to 130% dramatic effect. So you can see that it subtly just brings everything together and starts to make the rhythm and the beat feel like one song. It feels like it's connected to each other. It, it's just another way to add that tightness to your track and to your beat. Another thing about the group pool is I started uh, making electronic music on Ableton. I didn't go through the MPC route initially, so that whole MPC swing and that concept of time correction uh, kind of went over my head. Um, and then I got the MPC and I've been messing with it and the fact that there's just a simple time correction button on there that you could press uh, after you lay down a rhythm and then it'll adjust it and you could hear it basically real time. But in Ableton, there's more steps to get that um, time correction kind of groove. So yeah, don't overlook groove pool in Ableton live 12 ever again. Don't overlook it. All right, tip two for adding groove to your beats. Manual MIDI and audio adjustment. If you're into watching music production tutorials, there's this video by, um, I can't remember his name. He's a really famous music producer, but video right here. And in that video, he talks about manually ad adjusting very minute Tiny things, like say I was going to take this and I just wanted to start it like just a smidge earlier. And then I would take this kick and just drag it just a little bit later. So that's what I did right here in the claps. You see right here, I have uh, just a slight difference in when the, the two clap and the other clap on the left and right channels are, are hitting. And it's basically different for each each one of these. So what, what you could do is like command and then hold command after you click on the thing and left or right. And you're moving it like one or two ticks. It's, it's very subtle, very subtle, but it will add that swing to your beat. Um, you could move them back more for a little bit more of a lazy beat. If you want to kind of have more driving beat, move these up. By up, I mean like to the left. Now, yeah, using um, slight, very slight timing changes, it humanizes things. 
Speaking of human eyes, now you might be saying, okay, yeah, that's cool to do, but I don't want to spend all that time adjusting each of these, each of these. That's where Ableton Live 12 comes in with their new feature, human eyes. And you see right here, I grab all of these, highlight them, in the pitch and time, there's a human eyes button. And if I adjust this percentage, you could see the MIDI changing. So on this humanized button, you can randomly change the highlighted notes that you've chosen and press that. And if you change, if you put the percentage down when you press the button, it's only subtly changing it. You could also um, say you like this section to have that, but then you wanted this next section to even have another it's very subtly different um, set of very subtly different set of rhythm. Boom. Like it humanizes it a couple times again and it's just changing it randomly. So it's always going to be a very subtly different um, rhythm that is set. So that one's a major key. You can also do delay compensation and just uh, subtly changing that for the tracks too. And the way you could do that in Ableton Live 12, it's a little bit different from the older versions, but you would just click uh, track options at the bottom right here. It's a little bit different in Ableton Live 10 and 11, but um, on those ones, you, you press a delay compensation in Ableton Live 12, press track options. And then you have this track delay. So say I wanted those claps from earlier to, say I wanted those claps to be more laid back. I would increase the milliseconds for the track delay. Yeah, just even even putting your snare back seven, 10 milliseconds, nine milliseconds, uh, it's very subtle, but it will add a groove to things. So yeah, delay compensation, it's another way. Some of the automation is going to be already adjusted to the tempo, but let's say for things like a side chain, or if you're doing a build up or reverb or delay, for those things, you want to convert your tempo BPM to milliseconds. And you can do that easily here. As you see, just Google tempo BPM to MS to milliseconds calculator. We got tune form. I like using this one. So say for this track this is 90 bpm so you just simply type in 90 bpm and then whenever you need to get these exact numbers for some automation that you're doing some automated echoes perhaps you turn off the the sync button and you're just doing milliseconds this is a great way to use that and you're also adding more groove to your tracks because you're not relying on just jumping from different rhythms if that makes sense. I'll show you right here. You can see on, on this track, I have um, an arpeggiator set to chord trigger, and I'm automating the rate on this. I turned it from the sync to free rate, and I'm automating the rate in milliseconds. I'm using th the conversions here to get precise uh, measurements. And by using a, a BPM to milliseconds calculator, I can put in the exact measurements for the beginning and end points. So this is what it sounds like. And so by putting those exact end points, I know that this automation, even though it's set to free, is um, starting and ending on a millisecond value that is correct with the song and it'll add to the groove of the song so adding a certain sense of groove with curves because it's it's going through milliseconds and it's not synced to the tempo so you're adding another groove to your track you can just adjust these curves and you know just be creative with it Yeah, so that's one way of getting precise measurements 
you can also be uh, automating this, you know, with a MIDI knob and just feeling it out. And then, and then afterwards you can adjust the endpoints to make sure it's correctly in time. Um, I would say feel it out first and do um, adjustments with knobs if you have any MIDI controllers. And then afterwards you can get the precise measurements. So yeah, to recap, the Groove Pool is your friend in Ableton. Don't shy away from it. Use it. Experiment with it. You could always undo it if you don't like how it sounds. But it will help you in tightening your tracks. Manual MIDI and audio adjustment, especially when it comes down to the later stages of finalizing and mixing the track, just getting that final touch. Humanize, the humanize button in Ableton Live 12 is huge. And I think that's a really convenient option instead of having to um, manually adjust each of these notes nowadays. It's still fine to do that and then also use the humanize button. Delay compensation, you could use that to um, bring your tracks a little bit further back in in the rhythm or bring it more forward and driving the beat um, especially on drum tracks and then lastly um, just knowing your tempo in milliseconds and having a bookmarked page or app on your phone there's plenty of these types of audio calculator apps but just knowing these will um, will help you in the long run of finishing your songs and finalizing them and just really making them a lot tighter. So yeah, I hope you found this helpful. If you did, leave a comment, like, subscribe, all of that stuff. Uh, I'm hoping to make more tutorials like this and see what y'all think about it. All right, thank you. I'll leave you with this track and I'll see you next time. Peace.